OK, so we're back for yet another part of the first introductory lecture. This is part seven. Uh, hi, Pavlos. Hey, Hugh. Are you uh, still as excited as you were in part one? <laughs> <laughs> Have you had sufficient coffee to keep going? No. No. OK, good. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to look at now, we've looked at uh, a bunch of the front end stuff. Uh, we've looked at uh, lexing, uh, semantic, uh, syntactic analysis and uh, parsing and mm. at uh, semantic analysis. Mm. And uh, now we're going to look at the back end, the very, very, very back end, uh, which is how we finally produce assembly code from the structures that we've got inside mm -hmm. the compiler. OK. All right. Uh, so this is called code generation, where we're going to take a bunch of code uh, in the, you know, as I say, the, the intermediate representations and flat out some assembly code. Now, we are going to look at something called iLock, which is a, um, an instruction set. Have you ever heard of iLock? No. No, because um, it's not a real one. Okay, it's it's one that, it's one that comes from the book. Okay, mm. so it's it's nice in some respects in that it's in the book. It doesn't have all of the full richness, shall we say, of um, of real instruction sets. Mm. Uh, it doesn't have the absolute horrible nastiness of the Intel instruction set, and it's only got the bits that are important to teach mm -hmm. you what's the important things. Okay, so sadly not terribly useful for the real world, but it will be enough for us to work out what's going on. So. Um, all right. Just a silly question. With, uh, where's footnote two? Where's footnote? <laughs> you have to Clearly. footnote three. Look, I, look, look. I did this thing in Beamer, okay, <laughs> and Beamer. I, you can't ask questions like that. I don't know. It's down there somewhere. So anyway, so in the appendix somewhere, you will find all of this stuff, uh, all of the uh, description of the um, of the instruction. instruction set. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and you should go and have a look at it because. I don't know, because it's, we're going to be dealing with this stuff lots, so you should understand the basics of it. But I will take you through some examples of what's in there, OK? So here we're going to load an immediate constant, mm -hmm. OK? Which uh, immediate means the same, you don't need to um, calculate, mm -hmm. right? So load a constant integer, in this case, load 2 into register 2, OK? So load i, 2 goes to 2, OK? Uh, if we want to load a value into x... Then uh, into a uh, load sorry load a value into a register. This is load a value from memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we can load the address of X into uh, the register. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can then oh no beg your pardon oh no hold on hold on we have to go back a bit. Okay. So um, do you know what a record pointer is? Do you know what a frame pointer is? An uh, activation record pointer. Uh, do I still pretend I'm a student? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, then I don't. Oh, oh, well done you. OK, so um, what is an activation record? All right, so let's see. So do you know how a... So you know what happens when you call a function, right? Let's let's talk about talk about what happens when you call a function. Mm -hmm. all right? So we have a stack, which is where we put all of our information, yeah? And it normally grows downwards in memory, OK? So there's my stack. No? All right, that'll do. Uh, Your square stack. My, my square stack. Um, OK, so there, there it is. And, and when I, I, I have a, a stack pointer here, which... Oh, this is terrible. Uh, oh, my God, SP. All right, there's SP. Right? <laughs> OK. And um, when I call a function, what I do is I put in... No, hold on. I put in... No, I put in over the top of the thing, uh, I put here the parameters. How do I write in this thing? P. There we go. I put... <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. That's a P, by the way. All right, so I put in the parameters. And then when I call my, uh, call my function, right, I execute a call instruction. And what that does is it saves the program counter in there, all right, and it saves... Ooh, and it also saves the last frame pointer, which is, we'll come to the frame pointer in a second, okay? And then it allocates some space for the local variables that the function is going to need. And then uh, it puts the stack pointer here, so we can move this guy down here. Oh, that's good. Um, and the frame pointer, can we do this? Oh, the frame pointer goes to the beginning of the frame. FP, there we go, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. So, when I've got a local variable, hold on, I'm going to move the microphone a little bit away over here so because my machine's starting to make a lot of noise. Um, so, 
when we load a local variable, it exists somewhere in the local variables, say there, right? There's x, that's the address of x. Mm -hmm. So I need to know how far away x is from the frame pointer. So I have this off, oops, I have this offset, okay? And that is the offset of x, mm -hmm. okay? So now, when I want to load the value of x from the stack, what I do is I first of all load the offset, which we've already done, into R1. And then if I assume that, that F0, uh, R0, I beg your pardon in this case, um, holds the frame pointer, then I can load from that frame pointer plus this off offset uh, and dereference that to give me the value x in that thing. So at the end of this, x is now held in R1. Mm -hmm. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask. <laughs> to me, it makes perfect sense, but I knew this already. Do you like my beautiful drawings? Yeah. <laughs> They're very stylish, aren't they? Oh. Um, and then, by the way, just so that you know, uh, the stack is used also for any expressions that need to spill out of memory and uh, spill out of registers. Uh, this may grow with other stuff that is used during the uh, <laughs> during the um, during, during the time of this stuff. All right? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes sense. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, that's a terrible drawing. Um, but uh, we will delete. How do you, I must be able to select all this. Oh, okay, we'll just delete all this stuff. Okay, so there we go. So there's our load value. All right, and then another uh, example is that we can. Um, okay, so. <laughs> so um, you can add integers by doing an add instruction, which will add R2 and R3 and put the result into R1. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the type of instructions, the type of things that you're going to see here. So at least with uh, this instruction set, we assume that all operations except loads and perhaps stores happen in uh, among registers, right? That they happen amongst registers, yes, yes. Okay. That's that's. So we are not uh, doesn't operate directly on memory or anything like that. Doesn't operate directly on memory. Okay. Uh, no, that's that's correct. There are instruction sets which do do that. Yeah. But uh, like in this the case, x86 instruction set. Yes, but in this case, uh, you, you want to operate on something, you need to load it in from memory, operate on it, and then mm -hmm. send it back out to memory. Okay. Good question. I like it. All right. So um, let's look at how we might generate code uh, for this instruction set. So we're going to look at a very simple function which is going to generate code for us. It's going to be called gen. And in this case, we're just going to look at generating code for simple expression trees, which we're going to do top down and left to right. So we're going to take an a tree of expressions and we're going to write a recursive function which is going to emit the code for us in a sensible but probably not very optimal kind of way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's my, my function, gen, it takes a node in, and we'll look at what this register is about in a bit. But it returns a register. Okay, so that's just what this means, just in case any of you haven't seen this, this means returns type register. Okay, so, uh, and we're going to assume that the activation record, which we talked about, the frame pointer is in R0. Okay, so, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say case, which means if this is of, if, if the node that we've got is a number type, Right. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're just going to stick with integers. But so, if it's an integer, then we need to get a free register to put the value in. Okay. So we're going to get the next available register, and then we are going to emit the code for uh, filling that register with that value, which in this mm -hmm. case is load immediate with the value that's associated with that node, the number value that's associated that, that, with that node, and we put it into the register that we just got. Mm -hmm. Happy? Yeah. Okay. And then we return the register that we've used so that pe other people will know that this register is used for this thing. Other people further up in the expression tree will know that that was the register we used for this operand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can then have uh, a different case, which is if it's an identifier, if it's a variable, then again, we get a, we get a register that we can put the register value into. And we emit something very similar to the code that we've just seen, which loads the offset from that node. If we assume that the that the symbol table has included that the offset in the, in that place, or the attribute grammar has in, encoded that, and we load that into the register. And you'll notice that I reuse that register because once I've got that value, I can just load the value using that and overwrite it. Right. So this loads frame pointer plus that offset into the register that that I've got. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Easy? Yep. Easy peasy. And then if we've got a binary operator, which is plus in this case, this is sort of a pattern matching type style mm. of doing things. If you ever write a compiler, having a pattern matching uh, functional language makes 
life an awful lot easier rather than doing this in something like Java where you have to have millions of if statements all over the place. All right. In this case, we're going to get two registers, which we are going to... Uh, oh, beg your pardon. So what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call our gen function on the left-hand side of the tree. Okay, and that will tell us which register it's used to, to use that information, to, 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 to calculate its result. And we'll do it recursively on the right-hand side of the tree. And then we emit the code uh, to write this out. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm, in this case, I'm going to reuse one of the registers. Okay? Yep. So you can see, hopefully, that if we apply this stuff recursively down an expression tree, we should be able to uh, generate some code that looks like what we want it to be able to do, assuming that we haven't run out of registers or anything, unless, un anything unpleasant like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. So, shall we see an example? Would you like to see an example? You have any choice. <laughs> no. Okay, so let's see an example. Okay, let's see an example. All right, so what do we do here? So, um, we're going to generate this code for the expression that we saw earlier, and uh, we're going to knit backwards and forwards whilst we do this, right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is... Uh, is Wait, so the first thing we're going to see is we're going to ask gen of the node. That node was a binary operator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to come down into um, into this bottom case, okay, into here, and we're immediately going to start generating code for the left-hand side, okay. So that gets us to do it on this operator, on this uh, part of the tree. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call gen again for this, which is going to come to this one. And we emit this load value thing. For the left oh, no. one, it's oh, ID. Pardon. Yeah, 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 it's an ID. Yeah, so we generate these two bits of code down here. And we allocate a register for doing this with. OK? Yeah. So. And the right hand is another binary expression. OK, so, um, yeah, so then we go to another binary expression, which is similarly going to do its left child, which is going to give us the other case. So we choose a new register because we've used R1 already. So we've now got uh, R1 here containing X and R2 here containing 2. And then we're going to do the right-hand child. And that was a, another load. We get a new register. So we've got R3 equals uh, that register, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... We, we're going to do this. We're still on the right-hand side, so we pop off here. We, so we've done these two bits on that binary bit. Okay, so now we're going to emit that code and return the register that contained the the bit that we needed in it, yeah? Mm -hmm. this, is this making you excited to build a uh, a program, uh, uh, a, a code, uh, code generator? You're like, ooh, I really want to try that, <laughs> yeah? Okay, so we emit the code. In this case, this is multiply, not add. Um, for that thing, and we assign the register 3, and then we do the same thing for this guy, which ends up reusing that register up there, emitting this code down here. And we are done. We have generated some code. Woohoo! <laughs> do you feel like you've built a compiler yet? In, in your mind? No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Something tells me that it's a little bit more complicated than that. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a <laughs> tiny bit. Maybe a tiny bit. Yeah, but at least that part looks easy. Yeah. Okay, so um, you will notice, Pablos, because I know that you're paying uh, uh, rabid attention to this, uh, that we've used three registers. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? What do I think about that? Um, Did we need to use three registers? Probably not. I think we only need uh, two. We only need two registers. Eh? Yeah, see, that's a good point. Because what we needed was one register to do this bit, one register. If we'd done it in a different order, instead of doing instead of doing them in the order one, so you see we've got these order things here. Right, hold on. Um, we've got an order of things here, right? So we've got one, two, three, and then we, these are the orders that we do the code em emitting in, right? Um, if instead we've done it in a different order, we could have got away with two. Uh, nope. Okay. So the way. The way that could have happened would be that we could have done instead, if we'd done uh, this one first, and then this one, and then this one, then we would only we would after we've done this one uh, after we've done this binary expression here, we would no longer need register two or uh, register one or whatever whichever register we're using. Uh, so we could have reused this one here. Saving us a register. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That'd be great, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can already see how optimization is going to be important to us. 
Mm -hmm. Which is good because I think we're about to come and talk about a little bit about some optimization. Yeah. Okay. All right. Register optimization is uh, the back end, right? Register, register operation. Well, so is code generation. Code generation is also back end, mm -hmm. right? But we will deal. We will deal with that later. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll come back in, for a new one in a little bit.